which is your video. So today we have a part, and, the tool and we were given this part, store, and we weren't given an input sheet. We need to more. fully dimension this part, At the top of the and it's panel, kind of hard because you have no design report, intent, a tool and you have to make sure that you have every dimension on it. Now, you guys may make your own parts. How do you make sure it's fully dimensioned in the drawing? That's kind of a, it's always been kind of a hard thing to do. You know, I've always kind of highlighted with yellow highlighter, X, Y, and size, and go to every little feature. This is a cool way to do it, another way to do it. So I had this part. I didn't make it. So what I'm going to do is, you see all of our features over here. I'm going to grab the end of the part, and I'm going to drag it up to the first one. Drag them from the tool I'm going to go into my drawing now, and I'm going to retrieve the dimensions for this feature in the, the part on the timeline because that's it's going to give me everything that I need for that so if I go back to my drawing now I've While already got my views set up use the notice how my drawing went right back to that it's following that part and preview so and if I wanted my profile I could I could you can dimension it here I could dimension it here your media which one effects, would you guys like to do this one to an exact location this one rotating an object or even okay. changing its scale I'm going to do this one doesn't matter which side you do, just make sure that you have all these when dimensions. You're satisfied with your so, video, our sketches either had every dimension for this profile. Sure directly to popular web so, what we do is select on the view and make it have this dotted line. To get started, right click on it and retrieve the model annotations. Try or adding clips to the timeline. Now, or it looks to me like to this sketch was shared. You can always it had open points a fresh in copy there that were dimensioned the for the holes, and the holes were a separate when you're feature. Comfortable, Start so there are extra dimensions in the sketch. If you're um, to do so I'm going to select the like overall. So I'm holding down quizzes, Control to gather the dimensions. Check out the tutorials on our webpage. For this. Thanks so for I've watching. got the width of this. I've got the width of this notch. I've got the height of this notch. I've got the height of the part. Will that completely constrain this, this sketch? I know the width of this. I know the height of that comes in. Comes over here. The entire width. And then it comes up this height. So I'm going to apply that. Now any dimensions that I've already retrieved, it will never retrieve again. So you're not ever in jeopardy of double dimensioning something. The other thing that I need for this one feature is what? The depth. That's right. So I'm going to select this one. And if I zoom in, I've got the, the depth of that part here. Now what's really doesn't work is that these dimensions aren't correct with their offset so sometimes you have to go in here and play with this stuff move them around however you want um, make sure that you just do this piece by piece and if you do these as you go it's it you won't have to worry about it at the end of the drawing in reviewing them so now I'm going to go back to my part and I'm going to resume this first hole. Go back to my drawing. Now that hole has shown up. So do I dimension this hole here or do I dimension it here? On the right hand side because we have this very light counterbore. So anytime we're dimensioning a hole, we're going to dimension it with annotation and we're going to use hole and thread notes. The reason is if we dimension, if we just retrieve dimensions on this, it would give us the minor diameter of the tap. So we're going to go to hole and thread note. I'm going to select on this, pull it out. It's a metric thread. You can have metric thread in, uh, in standard inch parts. That's absolutely okay because I got a, I've got an NGK plug to put in there, so that's fine. So that's good, but it's not dimensioned, is it? So I'm going to say OK on that. So what I need to do is bring up that. You remember the dimensions that came up for this feature? It had the point for this hole, too. So I'm going to right click, and I'm going to retrieve model annotations here. Here's my height of this, and here's the location for that one. And I'm going to apply that. So now I have the location of this, and I have the um, size of it so I'm pretty good with this one with my offsets now these I'm going to pull back in a minute 
to the end of my center marks. But when I'm doing it this way, I have to put my center marks in last and then move those dimension legs back. Okay, so we've got those. Is it okay for this to cross this line? Yes. This is an extension line. You cannot cross the dimension lines, the lines that surround the dimension. So this one is okay. If it clears it up any, you can move it to the side. And if you want to move your text, you can stretch it. But don't stretch it out so far that you move it from the landing. If you want to move this dimension around, grab the elbow and move it around. If you drag this out too much, it's going to make a huge landing on there, and you don't want that. Control Z is undo just like on anything else. So I'm going to save this as I go back and forth. And notice that it's now saving the part. So I don't want to save the part. So can I click on this and say no? I only want to save the drawing. Because if I save the part, it's going to it's going to have another update in that part. And I don't want to change that at all. And I'm going to say OK. I'm going to go back to the part here. And I'm going to resume the next holes. That's these four. And remember that those dimensions were in that first sketch. So I'm going to do the same kind of scenario. So now on this one, I'm going to use my hole and thread call out, and I want to show you a trick on this one. Be really, really careful when you use hole and thread call outs because it's, sometimes it doesn't give the depth of a hole. Some of these holes don't go all the way through, so be very careful. All right, so this one doesn't have quantity. So I'm going to double click on this. And I could have you, if it has use default whenever you pull it up and you need to edit this, you take off use default. Now over here before this, I need to put the quantity in. And there's something really, really cool and I want to show you how it's set up. This is a, the quantity note. This is how you set up the quantity note. So this is a parameter for the quantity in that pattern. And then a space X space. So you don't even have to put the space in there when you put this parameter in. So I'm going to hit cancel. And when I want to put this parameter in, it's just this quantity pound sign. You don't have to put a space here because it's already in there. And I'm going to say, OK, it already knows that there are four in that pattern. All right. I'm hearing some oohs and ahs. The other thing that I need to do is I need to locate these holes. And they're in a sketch. And I shared that sketch with this very first extrusion. So I'm going to right click on this. And I'm going to retrieve the model annotations. And there they are. So from this hole, this hole is dimensioned. From this hole, this one. So these are related to this hole right here. I'm going to do this one the same way. But I don't want to do all four sides. It's kind of like overkill. So I'm going to say apply on that. And what I'm going to do instead, I want you to see this. This is a trick. If you have a situation like this and you're crossing a dimension line, if you drag the text in there, it will break that extension line. And that is not against the standard anymore. you got to break automatically. Tricky, tricky, tricky. All right. So what we're going to do is... Um, I've got to get this off the body of the part, right? And you can always have a little landing on these if you want. Now, I could say 2x on this, and I could say 2x on this and this. But I don't want to. What I want to do is put a continuation line between these holes. Vertically and horizontally, and that means that it's the same distance between these two as it is these two. And this is how you do it. You put an axis in. And you select on the circle, and then you go to the next circle, and right-click and create. And these center lines aren't looking good, so we're going to have to change our center line style. And I've got a good rule of thumb for that. Okay, when I do that, I only have to show the X and the Y because they're in alignment. That is a continuation line. So I'm going to change this center line style. This is a center line, and if I right click on anything, I can edit the style in the drawing. So this is going to change the entire drawing style, and this goes exactly to whatever I've right clicked on. So the rule of thumb here that I use, that I like in the drawings, there's not a rule of thumb in the ASME standard, but I use 32 thousandths in B, 
and I use 64 thousandths in D. So it's a two to one ratio. So this is twice as long as this little gap. And everything should update. So now all your axes in here should update to the same. No and OK. All right, so we got that one. We've got those located. We've got the quantity. We've got the countersink. We've got the, the counterbore here and the thread in this. So very good catch. Someone found that this extension line is crossing this dimension line. And so we can cheat that one too. We like the cheat part. All right, so I'm going to save that and no to the part and OK. So now I'm going to go back to the part here. And then we're going to start again in just a second.